What's up guys? Nate, the old school otaku here. And you know what? I am in the mood for a good old fashioned pickups video. So if you want to see all of the cool stuff I've gotten recently, stay tuned. And welcome back. So, like I said, I have been in the mood to get back to Roots. Um, and what better Roots to get back to for this channel other than to have a good old-fashioned pickups video. So, I know I've been teasing about this video for a while, and um, over the course of the last six, eight, ten months, however long it's been since... Um, well, since certain things, but also just, you know, it's been a while. Um, I've picked up quite a bit. Um, my birthday happened, uh, um, happens around the month of November. Um, Christmas has happened. Um, Easter has happened. Uh, White Day has happened. Um, Valentine's Day has happened. So, you know, traditionally in, in our household, you know, a lot of most uh, major events uh, or holidays and whatnot usually come with some form of gift giving, actually. It's not just Christmas time or birthdays or whatnot, um, though those tend to be the times that we tend to give the most. Um, you know, like Easter, I get some things for Easter and um, I get some things for other stuff. I mean, um, this... This was an Easter gift. So, <laughs> um, other things, Christmas, um, other, actually, no, I think like this was Valentine's day. Um, some of this was birthday and <laughs> still more Christmas. So <laughs> got quite a bit to effectively go over. And of course I have not been without, um, purchasing things either. In fact, um, there's uh, stuff from our trip to Florida um, recently that we had done that I picked up and things to go over at another time too. So there's still more pickup videos to go over before I effectively run out of stuff that we have picked up um, in during the hiatus and have to start looking at new things because unfortunately most of the stores that we like to frequent um, are still, for the most part, fairly closed, but, uh, doesn't mean there isn't potentially, you know, other types of content to, uh, to discuss, and, well, you might notice, uh, something new back here, and I elected not to make a full video on it, but this is a brand new computer chair, um, that I had picked up, uh, it's the, um, Autonomous Ergo Chair 2, um, I believe is the, uh, exact brand name, and I can say that, uh, that I am so much more comfortable sitting in this thing than I have been in my old uh, computer chair, which I still have. I actually have it out um, in my uh, work from home area. <laughs> so this chair, though, I can sit in this chair for extremely long periods of time, um, be very comfortable, not have to move my weight too much between, um, uh, well, just between position positions in order to keep comfy which makes editing a whole lot easier amongst a whole lot of other things. Um, not that, you know, <laughs> let's face it, I'm recording this uh, during some very interesting times. So uh, <laughs> things are currently going on with uh, human malware and, um, uh, well, I guess technically it's not Pride Month uh, this month, uh, though happy Pride, or should I say happy Rage. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> There is uh, there is that too, um, but let's let let's let's get into it. So first off, um, so I can 
actually get them off my table and make it a little bit easier to uh, talk about this fun stuff. Um, let me go over a couple of things that I had picked up for myself while I was picking up presents for Ruchan for her birthday. So I traditionally like to buy shirts for Ruchan uh, when it's big gift giving season. So around Christmas time, I'll buy uh, shirts for her. I'll do it around uh, uh, her birthday and other times. But uh, what usually happens is, is when I'm buying shirts for her, I usually pick out a couple for myself. Now, I usually pick out way more for her when I'm buying. So like I'll um, pick up like five or six shirts for her and then I'll pick up two or three for myself uh, when I'm doing it that way. Though sometimes I'll go out and look for just shirts for myself. It's like, okay, I need a new wardrobe. That's how I get, you know, cool shirts like this um, to wear. And I'll pick up a couple of shirts for her at the same time. So, you know, keeping us both clothed in uh, interesting and new ways. Um, but I want to show off a couple of these cool t-shirts that you will be seeing in future episodes as, you know, I start cycling through them while recording and, and, <laughs> and whatnot because, you know, they're ready to go into my um, usual... Uh, well, they're ready to go into rotation. Um, they no longer reek of vinegar, uh, so it's perfect time to bring them into rotation. So first up here is this one, and I really like this design. I think it's really cool. Um, it's basically a silhouette of the Sailor Senshi uh, with the moon behind them, and you can see their... Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> the... Well, I keep wrinkling it, but uh, the little white in the Sailor um, outfit things. So, I'm a big fan of Sailor Moon, if it isn't already obvious. Um, so, this one is really cool. I like this design, so I decided to pick it up. Not too much to say about it, just cool shirt design. Alright, so, next up, this is the design that actually got me um, to look up the initial sale of shirts and whatnot, because um, there's a couple of different places that I usually shop to, but this time I decided to try Tea Republic. Um, so I've gone with Tea Turtle and a whole bunch of other um, types of places, but I decided to try Tea Republic, and that's because this shirt was advertised, or at least one very similar to it was advertised. And this is a cool synthwave um old 80s effect, that I am very much into. Um, and it's, you know, that traditional sunset logo uh, with Sailor Jupiter, um, because Sailor Jupiter is uh, my senshi. So <laughs> there we go. Um, I thought this one was really cool, so I wanted to pick it up. I think it was the one that originally brought me to the site to start looking at things was a Sailor Moon one. Um, but I was like, you know, if they have Sailor Moon and I noticed Sailor Mars, they had to have Jupiter in there somewhere. It took a lot of searching to find it, but I found it. And while I was out looking, I ran into this shirt. So this is a really cool heart logo um, with, uh, once again, Sailor Jupiter. Just a uh, cool little um, silhouette of Jupiter. And yeah, that's... Pretty much it. Um, I liked this design. I thought it was cute. I had to have it. Um, and, you know, the fact that it's a heart <laughs> uh, doesn't hurt it at all, at least in my book. So there is uh, there is definitely that. So, all right. Those are the t-shirts. Um, not a whole lot to say about them. Uh, my experience with uh, uh, with Tea Republic was relatively good. Uh, took a while for printing to happen, and that's because, well, unfortunately, I ordered all of this um, it effectively the start of the shutdowns for human malware. Uh, so it took considerably longer than normal to print these shirts. Um, th this type of uh, shirt printing and whatnot is usually done on demand uh, based off of orders, and that's perfectly fine. I'd much rather, uh, you know wait a little bit. And, uh, you know, the fact that they took the precautions to 
um, not have their employees in the uh, in the office, you know, working with the chemicals and and working on all this while all of that was going on, um, or at least the the initial hit of human malware uh, worked out really well. I I thought it was definitely cool. I mean, we still kept the shirts in quarantine for oh a week and a half or so before we actually um, broke into them, uh, but that's just our way. Uh, as it were. So anyway, it was really cool. Um, I would recommend them. I, I think they were, they were good and their, the shipping was perfectly fine. Had no problems. So definitely one to look at, uh, next time, uh, you're in the mood for, um, some cool, fancy, uh, new t-shirts, um, have tons and tons of designs. Um, uh, Ruchan's really into the Legend of Zelda, so the majority of her shirts were Legend of Zelda themed. And I'm into Sailor Moon, so Sailor Moon is what I went with. So there we go. So I guess that's uh, enough stalling, if you can really call me rambling about t-shirts that I like that I picked up in a pickup video. Stalling. Um, but <laughs> let's get into the actual pickups, shall we? So, I know previously I'd gone over the DVDs and the laser discs and whatnot that I had recently gotten, but um, what I hadn't had gone over, um, and some of the uh, video games and things that I picked up, hadn't gone over the Blu-rays <laughs> that we had gotten. So, uh, let's kind of dig into that. And, well, I guess that's not entirely true. Let's start with... Uh, uh, one thing that I had gotten. So, um, around uh, my birthday, I went out searching um, and trying to take photos of things. I, I, I did a little bit of shopping. I didn't do a whole lot of buying, but I did shopping. Um, it's kind of cathartic uh, to get out and just look around and see what was out there. And while I was searching, I found um, this. And what is this? Well, this is Freedom planet. Now I believe it was the uh, Switch version that I had seen um, at the local Best Buy. And I was like, you know what? I have seen this game get speedrun quite a few times. It is considered a spiritual, spiritual successor to old school 2D Sonic the Hedgehog before we got Sonic Mania. And um, I thought, you know what? I really enjoy Sonic. I like old school Sonic, so why not pick it up? And it was, you know, it's limited run for Switch. So decided to pick it up. Well, lo and behold, I start opening my presents um, Christmas morning. And the first one I open is this. Freedom Planet for uh, <laughs> PS4. And... I was, you know, thrown back because I had requested the Switch version. Now, I personally don't own a Switch, but Ruchan does. Unfortunately, she tends to sequester the Switch to herself instead of leaving it docked at the TV, so I don't get a chance to play it too often. Um, but, you know, I saw it for that and physical media and all, you know, I was like, I wanted it for Switch. Well, a couple packages down the line, I open up this version for Switch. And, you know, it was kind of a, you know, quandary. It was like, why do I have both? Well, um, apparently the uh, Switch version is more common than the PS4 version. And she knows that um, I prefer my games on PS4, uh, partially just due to the fact that the PS4 is actually hooked up to the TV. So I can actually play this at effectively any time I want. Um, unlike this, where I have to ask her to let me borrow it. Uh, to play. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll get another Switch so I can actually have one hooked up to the TV so I can play the few Switch games that I do own um, or that she owns that I want to play. Um, I actually really much enjoy Tetris 99, so... <laughs> Why not? You know? So she's like, yeah, well, we just went for both. And I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, what is uh, what is Freedom Planet? Well, other than the basic synopsis I provided, uh, which is effectively a spiritual successor to Sonic the Hedgehog, um, there are three characters you can play as. You can play as uh, Mila or Mila, Lilac or Carol. 
Um, these are the, well, I guess you can see them here in this as well. And um, the, the artwork is really actually like stunning. It's beautiful uh, from what I've seen. Now, I haven't thrown this directly on. You can still see from the cellophane I haven't yet, but uh, haven't had a chance to really blow it up on my 4K screen yet. But uh, from what I've seen, it's uh, really colorful, good 2D designs. And the style of gameplay is interesting. So um, <clears throat> it is effectively a Sonic clone in a lot of ways. So help Lilac and friends save their world from war in an engaging adventure mode with fully voiced cutscenes or skip the fluff and play each stage in order, in order with classic mode. Do you have what it takes to save Avalis from the wrath of Lord Brevin and his robotic minions? Can, can we say Sonic clone? <laughs> Three playable characters. As Lilac, you can whip enemies with your hair or use the dragon boost to fly through the air at high speed like a comet. And I think I've seen a lot of Lilac play um, for speedrunning and whatnot. As Carol, you can bust through foes with a flurry of punches and kicks or summon a motorcycle that lets you ride up walls and ceilings. Okay. And then as Mila, Mila, you can summon blocks to throw at enemies or reflect their attacks back at them with a physical shield. Now, I know Mila, um, one of the green blocks there, I know I have actually seen her used a lot in speedrunning. It's like those blocks like totally destroy the, uh, the level um, setup, which is pretty standard for Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, if you're not doing zips and things like that, it's... Not normal, <laughs> I guess. So, either way, I thought this was cool. So, glad that I have it. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> next up on the list is a show that um, I have known about for quite a while and was, you know, kind of disappointed when I originally found out about it, and it is I Tenchi Muyo. Now, I am an avid Tenchi Muyo fan. I, I enjoy Tenchi quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's Tenchi is the original harem. Um, I am all for Tenchi X Ryoko myself. But uh, this one is a weird one. So kind of the, the idea or premise, um, well, other than the fact that um, this is set up in 50 episodes... Uh, and each episode is short, so it's only like 12 minutes long each episode of this. So, for one, Ai Tenchi Muyo is definitely an interesting um, interesting beast in that, uh, unlike the other spin-off TV shows or anything else, um, it's a bunch of shorts. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thought process. But the other thing is that, um, generally, like the main storyline, Tenchi is not dealing with um, the main... Tenchi Muyo characters. He's not dealing with his usual harem in this. So, kind of the idea, um, thanks to Washu, the universe has been thrown into chaos, and it's up to Tenchi to clean up the mess. But to do so, he's going undercover as a teacher in an all-girls school. Or you see where this is probably going. But will, uh, what will await him besides the attention of cute girls at this not-so-ordinary school? And will he be able to balance timelines and, tr and trouble that comes with this latest adventure? Join the harem and the fun in this series of shorts. So I think it's in some ways a mystery. So from what I heard, kind of the storyline is that Tenchi is in this alternate universe um, where he's acting as a teacher. And one of the girls in his school, or at least in his class, is supposedly the person that caused all of these problems. And he's supposed to try and figure out who that is. Um, and I think the girls kind of take over him. And um, there's a lot of typical harem -y type stuff uh, with, you know, a bunch of teenage girls fawning over um, the teacher. Now, I, I think this is Tenchi when he is uh, a bit older uh, than he is in the uh, original OVA timeline um, and storyline. But... Uh, I haven't actually sat down and watched this one yet. Um, when I heard about the storyline, I was like, well, it's more Tenchi. Yeah, sure, why not? 
but um, I never did get around to watching it just because the premise seems so weird to me. Even though it is, you know, more Tenchi, it's different Tenchi. So it was hard for me to sit down and, and think about watching it at the time. But um, now I actually own a copy of it, so it makes it a lot easier to sit down and watch it. Um, overall, 50 episodes, uh, about 12 minutes apiece, comes out to about 200 minutes long. Um, this version here from Funimation uh, has uh, one, <laughs> effectively it's all in one Blu-ray, uh, which is fine. And uh, this is supposed to be celebrating 20 years of Tenchi Muyo. So, I, Tenchi Muyo. Okay. So, this next one up here is kind of one of those classic... Uh, um, 90s fantasy anime. Um, in a lot of ways, you can consider it effectively an isekai, um, but it's 90s isekai, where like modern isekai is, you know, main character dies in the real world and wakes up as some in in this fantasy world, and that's where they are. Um, where 90s isekai um, is essentially uh, usually more than one character. Uh, just gets teleported to another world, a fantastical world, and usually um, in the process they uh, acquire special traits and talents. Um, and, uh, well, the show I'm talking about, uh, one of the quintessential shows is Those Who Hunt Elves. <laughs> so, this is a funny, zany, uh, silly show. And kind of the premise is um, these main characters, and there's there's three main characters, um, which uh, are in here, uh, two two girls and a guy, um, who had apparently gotten transported uh, from their world, their normal world, to this fantastical world, and apparently there is a spell uh, that can get them back home. The problem is the spell is in fragments. The other problem is that it is in fragments written on the skin of elves. So in order to get back home, these, these group, this group goes from town to town looking for elves in order to strip them naked to find a piece of the spell um, to bring them back home. <laughs> so, and... In, in the process, they meet uh, they meet another elf um, that, in a lot of ways, starts to help them, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, and uh, they uh, they ride on a tank, uh, which um, is sentient and whatnot. So, uh, one of the main characters is a weapons expert. Um, that's her here. Uh, you've got an actress. And then the guy in the background that's probably a little bit harder to see um, there is, well, he's ripping off clothes of um, a bunch of elves. Um, he's kind of a martial arts -y type guy. I think he was um, the, uh, the actress's bodyguard. <laughs> and then there's the tank. So, and then the, the elf that helps, helps them. And you can kind of see um, a print on her arm there. And that is... Uh, a piece of the spell, basically. So it is effectively two seasons of 12 episodes each, 24 total episodes, um, where it is the wildest fantasy quest ever, and the poor elves are just going to have to bear it. <laughs> it's, it's silly, it's zany, it's fun. Um, the premise is um, a little weird. Uh, in, so, in some regards, uh, today's light, it's really weird um it's not exactly uh it's not exactly what i would call hentai or etchy technically um even though yeah the main premise is girls clothes get ripped off um these female and all of the elves are female that this is happening to uh <laughs> while yeah there's a lot of that there's not really any nudity um it's all done for the most part very tastefully um they you know they get their clothes ripped off and then they they cover themselves and um you know, so you don't see any of that stuff. And so it's treated um, a lot better than a show of this type might be often considered to be treated. But uh, it's definitely a product of Japan 
in the 90s. Uh, really cool opening theme, uh, and I, for the most part, enjoyed it. Uh, it's it's weird. It's silly. Um, something that, uh, you know, maybe you want to take a look at. So give her a shot if you want. Uh, it's 24 episodes, around 600 minutes. Um, show brought out by Sentai Filmworks, this edition, uh, was. And, uh, yeah, definitely cool. Those who hunt elves. So, next up here is a show that, uh, well, in some regards doesn't need much of an introduction. Um, if you're into old school anime, uh, you probably have heard of this show, and I am talking about Galaxy Express 3.9. This is the Sentai, um, uh, sen or no, not Sentai, uh, Discotech, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is the Discotech release. Uh, this is... Uh, Collection 1, uh, the first departure, episodes 1 through 39. Uh, there's more episodes to the whole entire TV series. And uh, I believe another version of this, or, or part 2, Collection 2, is coming out relatively soon, I believe. And uh, yeah, so this show here basically follows um, uh, this main character of Tetsuro, um, who basically is kind of like an outcast on Earth or whatnot, and he boards the Galaxy Express 3.9. And this is in a set in a futuristic uh, world where um, these trains actually train, uh, teleport, or well, transport people from world to world. Um, and so these train, you get on trains at train stations, and these trains take you uh, to different worlds. And this famous ship called the 3.9 um, he winds up uh, hopping on and meets this woman named Mattel. Uh, so you've got uh, uh, Tetsuro here, Mattel, and then that's the conductor, and the three nines actually in the background um, depicted here. So there's a huge adventure that this winds up going on, and the three nine gets involved with uh, some pretty interesting battles and things. But in a lot of ways, the storyline, or at least each episode, is kind of teaching... Uh, teaching lessons about what um, what life is like uh, from world to world, and there's a lot of uh, moral uh, questions and things brought up in the storyline. So it's kind of it, it really is a cool teaching tool in a lot of ways. Um, but uh, this one this one's definitely fun. Um, all aboard the Galaxy Express, the original Galactic Adventure remastered. So yeah, that's the one cool thing. This is fully remastered. Uh, Whereas uh, Those Who Hunt Elves, this is presented in standard 480p, standard definition. This has been fully remastered in HD. This is a three-disc set. Um, like we said, it is episodes 1 through 39 on three discs. 950 minutes total for this collection uh, brought out by Discotech and uh, more to come. Features is re uh, remastered video and subtitles. There's creditless openings and endings, and I really love creditless openings and endings. It makes um, it makes it a lot easier to utilize um, credit, uh, opening and ending credits for music videos, because um, I do tend to make music videos, and uh, series uh, premiere trailer. So, after witnessing the death of his mother and being left for dead at the hands of Count Mecca, 10-year-old Tetsuro Hoshino is awakened by a mysterious woman, Mattel. In exchange for only his company, Mattel offers him the ride of his life on the Galaxy Express 39. It is said that those who travel aboard the legendary train to the end of the line can receive a free mechanical body, and with it, immortality. Impoverished and alone, Tetsuro leaps at the opportunity and joins Mattel on a quest that will span the cosmos. As the Galaxy Express 39 makes its way across our solar system and beyond, Tetsuro is drawn deeper into a dangerous universe where peril lurks at every stop. From the pirates of the notorious ship Queen Emeraldus to a planet that travels through dimensions, this is just the start of Tetsuro's epic journey. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that is Galaxy Express 3.9. Really cool show. Um, it is legendary uh, legendary artist Leiji Matsumoto. Um, I'm a big fan of Matsumoto's work. I love his character designs, even though if, even if they are um, tend to be uh, rather old um, 60s and 70s style. Um, I definitely like his artwork, his style, the way he draws uh, women. Um, very beautiful. Uh, very, very beautiful. I mean, I've got lots of uh, Matsumoto's figures and things like that. So there, there is that. And yeah, um, 
I, th- I think it's a cool story, so give it a shot, maybe, if you like. But <laughs> glad I finally own a copy. So excited when they actually um, announced that this was coming out. Can't wait to pick up part two. Okay, next up is, again, another silly 90s show um, that in a lot of ways almost feels like it had to have come out of the 90s. And uh, it is Sorcerer Hunters, or Bakuretsu Tenshi, um, as its Japanese uh, title goes. So this, uh, this collection here is also a discotheque release. It is standard definition only, um, not upscaled or, um, or you know, redone or remastered. Uh, it is standard definition only. Um, it is, I believe, one disc doesn't actually say, uh, but yeah, it's one disc, 29 total episodes. So this actually includes the um, TV series and the OVA. Um, the OVA was uh, four or six episodes, something like that. Um, the TV series was a standard TV series. Um, it is a bit more on the etchy side, um, this is, uh, but uh, it's not um, unlike... Uh, Unlike those who hunt elves, it's not a group of ragtag uh, people from Earth who have transported into a magical world. It's just people who live in this magical world. And uh, there's sorcerers or wizards or whatever um, that potentially you know, run amok or could potentially run amok. And these, this cast of characters go around and they punish these sorcerers. So <laughs> uh, it's definitely kind of interesting, but um, there is a bit of etchy. The OVA is extremely strongly etchy, uh, extremely in comparison to the TV series. Uh, TV series is completely tame in comparison. Uh, so take that as a warning. Um, 575 total minutes across all 29 episodes presented in standard definition in this, um, in this set. And uh, so sorcerers can't stop them. Wizards can't win. Is someone kidnapping your local virgins? Are mysterious entities sucking the souls out of the peasants? Do you have a sorceress infestation that just won't go away? Big Mama has the perfect cure. A rough and ready team of sorcerer hunters, ready to take on any rogue magic user that crosses their path. If the charms of the voluptuous chocolate and tiara misu... Uh, can't persuade the naughty wizard to change his ways, then Manly Gatu Mocha, Suave uh, Marin Glace, or the oversexed Carrot Glace will stop him cold. Don't miss the titillating series uh, Tales of Sorcerer Hunters. The complete collection contains all 26 TV episodes and three OVAs in standard definition on one Blu-ray. Uh, includes the original Japanese language with English subtitles and the English dub. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the gimmicks is um, one of the main characters uh, has a tendency to kind of go werewolfy, um, based off of uh, things that happen to him, and the only way to bring him back down from that is to basically whip him and treat him like a dog, or treat him like the dog he is. So the two female characters um, that are part of the um, the part of the group basically strip down their very modest, normal clothing into uh, into dominatrix-type gear and whip the dog uh, in order to bring him back into submission. So um, if you're into that type of uh, male abuse, uh, it could be fairly cathartic to you. Um, and at times, I think the main character does deserve um, deserve it sometimes. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's it's a cute, uh, cute storyline. Um, it's... You know, there is some etchy to it, but it's not necessarily a big portion of the storyline. Uh, so you can definitely get in, uh, get into that. And it's definitely not the central premise of, you know, stripping. Uh, <laughs> not the central premise of stripping elves. Uh, so there is definitely that. But this is definitely a product, again, of the 90s. Um, Sorcerer Hunters, I think it's a pretty cool show. Glad to finally own a, well, simpler copy than uh, the massive sets and things that I've previously owned. But yeah, that is Sorcerer Hunters. Okay. 
Next up is a show that I've talked about a couple of different times, and I now own in multiple different formats. And the reason why I own it in multiple different formats is just because it is just that good. This is a show that when Discotech announced it, I was so ready to just take my money. Please take my money. I'm talking about Giant Robo. I love Giant Robo. This is a such an awesome show. Um, it is an OVA series, uh, seven episodes long. This edition here from Discotech was released on two discs, um, fully remastered, Blu-ray, awesome, epic quality, um, 420 minutes long. And despite the fact that the, um, the show is called Giant Robo, and also despite the fact that this show does have mecha in it or giant robots in it. It's not really a giant robot show. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird. It's a superhero show. It's a show about superheroes. It just so happens that one of the characters, one of the superheroes or member of the, of the league um, of good guys controls this giant robot called giant robo so yeah um it's really cool show presented really awesomely the it's concise um you really get to know the characters and feel for the characters and love the characters and feel for them as they go throughout the storyline um it's only seven episodes long but each episode's like 40 40 to 50 minutes long so it feels like a full-on TV series. Like I said, it's 420 minutes over those seven episodes. Um, there's also a bunch of uh, specials, uh, Omake specials called the Ginrei specials, which um, I don't know for sure if they are on this set or not, uh, to be honest, but um, definitely cool. And I, I know I've talked in length about the Giant Robo laser discs that I had, so... Uh, <laughs> A terror from the past returns to destroy the world in high definition for the first time. In a marvelous future, Earth, Earth is in the midst of conquering its energy crisis thanks to the Shizuma Drive, a miracle invention from a troubled scientist. But dark forces conspire to tip the balance of power in their favor. The Big Fire Organization seeks to neutralize the Shizuma Drive in order to create a new energy crisis, and one of their key operatives has his own secret plans to take revenge and plunge the world into darkness. Standing against Big Fire is the International Police Organization, a heroic and colorful assemblage of mighty warriors, secret agents, and super scientists. The IPO's youngest member is Daisaku Kusama, an earnest 12-year-old boy who commands the mightiest super robot in the world, Giant Robo. And I'm just getting chills reading, reading this. Um... I cannot stress how much I really, really enjoy this show. So, other than that, um, I, I encourage you to pick it up. Um, it's definitely, I think, worth um, the time invested to pick up this version. <laughs> now that I've talked about it, I can actually pop it in and, and watch it again in glorious HD. And maybe do a review it sometime. Let me know if you'd like that. Okay, moving on right on along. Uh, next up here is a show that uh, is a dirty pleasure of mine. Uh, well, not really dirty, but a guilty. Yeah, guilty is probably the better uh, better term. Um, I loved the game, though I didn't actually honestly make it very far in it. I don't think I even passed the first disc entirely. Uh, but I really enjoyed the game when it came out, and I really enjoyed the series when it originally aired. Um, despite the fact that it's not really all that great. Um, it's it's a video game tie-in series. It's wacky, it's zany, a lot of extra extraneous material that's not in the game, uh, but still fun, and it doesn't even complete the whole entire storyline, and I am talking about Star Ocean EX. <laughs> so uh, Star Ocean EX is an animated version of Star Ocean 2, or um, second, not second star, sorry, um, 
because that's Lunar. Um, or maybe it is second star story. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's Star Ocean 2. Um, and it deals with the main character, Claude, who shows up on um, this alien world and uh, gets involved with, um, with this other character and a cast of hijinks and things um, ensue. Uh, based on the hit video game, uh, Star Ocean... Oh, Star Ocean, the second story. It's right on here. I was close. It's not second star story. It's just second story. Um, Claude and his father are on a mission to investigate the unexplored planet uh, Mirokina. When they arrive, Claude is mysteriously transported to a different planet with swords and magic called Expel. While wandering around the woods, he saves a girl named Rena from a monster with his phase gun. After she is rescued, she tells him he is the legendary warrior of light from um, whom she has been looking for. In search of the sorcery globe, which is believed to be the source of evils, they set off on a journey that will determine the world's fate. This complete collection contains all 26 episodes in Japanese with English subtitles and the original English dub. Um, contains clean opening and clean ending. Uh, this is another Discotech release, so thank you once again, Discotech. You really like my money, uh, <laughs> and I'm happy providing it uh, in order to get cool, um, cool releases like this. And yeah, so like I said, it's 26 episodes, 600 minutes long, and I really enjoyed this show. So it's definitely not something I would say you know not to go get. But um, if you liked Star Ocean. You'll probably enjoy this uh, quite a bit, um, though don't expect it to go into the full storyline of the game or any of that. Um, I think it only gets maybe potentially halfway through the game, um, if that, but uh, definitely a fun one. Okay, so next up is... Well, this is one that's quite interesting. And one of the reasons why it is interesting is um, it is the very first 4K Blu-ray that I own that, well, let's just say it's, I mean, I own quite a few 4K Blu-rays. Uh, let's be honest. I have a 4K TV. I've had a 4K TV for a very long time, actually, um, since they were kind of a new thing, actually. I've for some odd reason, had a 4K TV. But uh, this is the very first anime on 4K. Space Adventure Cobra, the movie. <sighs> this one, this one's a cool one. I actually had to refrain, um, a very hard refrain, from picking this up at Yomacon this past year from Otaku Joe. Good thing I did, because Ruchan went behind my back and picked it up for me. <laughs> and then gave it to me as a gift. So, this one here, I will be honest, I have never actually watched any Space Adventure Cobra. I've seen AMVs of it, so I know of the character and some of the storylines, but I've never actually sat down and watched this one. Um, so I don't have much nostalgia or really a whole lot of context about this show. Um, to go in, but uh, what was really cool for me is just the fact that this is 4K Blu-ray. Um, I really want to pop it in and just see how beautiful this will look in 4K. Um, one thing I do know is that uh, a lot of the screenshots and character designs and things that I've seen of this movie is that it's really well done. It seemed like uh, quite a bit of money was put into it. Um, it's a 100-minute long movie. Uh, this release is also a discotheque release. So thank you, discotheque. And I really can't wait to start seeing more potential for more 4K Blu-ray uh, anime uh, coming out. Uh, you know, there's there's definitely quite a few uh, quite a few movies and things I would really love to see in 4K. So yeah, 4K HDR just. Um, like the Oh My Goddess movie, uh, that one, that so, you know, was such a beautiful, um, you know, cell animated show. Uh, be really cool to see that in, in 4K HDR. Uh, <laughs> um, Redline, I think that one would be really cool. There's a lot of really cool shows I think that 
could really benefit from the full 4K HDR treatment uh, to get all of those colors and whatnot. So I think anime is actually a good, um, or, or at least older anime would be really good candidates for the HDR treatment, I think, um, provided you can uh, get the old cell or at least, well, probably not the old cells because they, you know, typically destroy those, but uh, provided you could get like the old, um, the old initial reels and things like that and go through the full cleanup process and everything, um, like a lot of the work that Discotech, or not Discotech, um, that, uh, <laughs> that Animego does with their releases, things like that. I think um, a lot more anime could really stand this treatment. Um, so I'm looking forward to sitting down, sitting down and actually uh, giving this a watch. So yeah. A um, little bit about the show. In a universe swarming with inhabited planets and bizarre aliens, corrupt governments operate in the pay of star-spanning criminal syndicates, and the Justice Federation of United Galaxies places a price on the heads of hardened criminals. The highest bounty of all rests with the infam infamous uh, space pirate Cobra, an unstoppable rogue whose left arm conceals a devastating psycho gun. Presumed dead for two years, Cobra comes out of retirement after an encounter with the beautiful bounty hunter Jane, a decision which leads him into direct conflict with the sinister galaxy pirates, a vast criminal organization led by Crystal Bowie. <laughs> the personification of death itself, together with his female android companion, Lady, Cobra sets out with Jane to rescue the bounty hunter's two lost sisters and save the wandering planet Miras. But Crystal Bowie is never far behind, and deception and betrayal wait around every corner. A fast-moving, stylish, and furiously inventive film from the pen of classic manga writer uh, Buichi Terasawa, Space Adventure Cobra mixes humor and drama in a pulse-pounding hymn to the power of love, death, and heavy weaponry. Definitely sounds cool. Um, probably right up my alley. I mean, I'm sure it is. But uh, yeah, one I plan to definitely check out very, very soon here. All right. Next up is another show that I've never actually watched, um, but uh, is definitely in the vein of a lot of shows that I have watched in the past and enjoyed and storylines and whatnot. I'm, I'm talking about Cutie Honey Universe, the complete collection. Um, this is, um, this release here is a Sentai Filmworks release, uh, 300 minutes, 12 episodes on two discs. Uh, this is actually a fairly recent uh, release. Uh, Cutie Honey U Universe is not uh, old anime. I mean, it's based off of old anime, but it's definitely a newer anime. And, uh, well, Cutie Honey has a tendency to, you know, deal with uh, nudity and sexual themes and things like that. So it's not necessarily something I would say um, is good for um, children, uh, young children. Like this, this show here is technically unrated, but in a lot of ways I'd say it's probably TVMA. Um, but uh, one of the notes on the back here, it says, contains uncensored video. So there's probably some naughty things happening in this show. Uh, Cutie Honey is a storyline, um, generally every Cutie Honey incarnation deals with Honey, who is this advanced cyborg, um, android, uh, character who has the ability to transform into different, uh, personas, so, like, all of these girls are all Honey, um, all the same character, in fact, sa same with her, um, that's also Honey, um, she has the ability to transform into all these different uh, styles and she goes into battle mode and she's cutie honey and uh, usually deal uh, deal with these villains that are trying to take over uh, the city or whatnot and um, a whole bunch of other things. There's different storylines, different, uh, uh, different decisions, uh, each iteration and this one's no different. Um, so she has the most incredible body ever and the villains will do anything to get their hands on it. <laughs> the girls at St. Chapel Academy all think Honey Kisaragi is just another sweet, kind, and incredibly beautiful girl. But what they don't know is that Honey is actually the world's most advanced android with the capability to transform her, transform her lovely body into multiple forms with their own special abilities. 
Unfortunately, the evil Sister Jill, head of the sinister organization Panther Claw, uh, knows Honey's secret, and the malevolent mistress of Mayhem will stop at nothing in her attempts to capture Honey and use her body for her own twisted purposes. With Jill's army of half-human hotties on one side and Honey with her stalwart allies at the PCIS, Panther Claw Criminal Investigation Service. On the other, it's going to be the wildest, sexiest battle ever. Watch out, evildoers. The original Magic Girl is back in Cutie Honey Universe. And that is the one thing about Cutie Honey is um, it, Cutie Honey is often considered to be the original Magic Girl girl. I don't know if that's actually correct. Um, I haven't done the research. There might technically be other Magical Girls, but technically most everything leads back to the original Cutie Honey from the 70s. Um, so, yeah, um, I believe this was, yeah, by Go Nagai. So there is, you know, Go Nagai is known for being a bit on the risque side of things, so uh, there's definitely some of that in here. But, uh, yeah, I when I saw this, I was like, I didn't know there was another Cutie Honey. Had to pick it up because, well, even if it is new anime, it's based off of old. So, falls in right in line with uh, the type of stuff that I usually like to pick up. Um, so yeah, Cutie Honey Universe. Next up, though, is getting further back in time to new Cutie Honey. <laughs> this is a discotheque release um, of new Cutie Honey which is an OVA that came out back in the 90s. Um, eight episodes on two uh, on one disc, uh, this version, 240 minutes. I believe this... Um, it doesn't say it's SD on uh, Blu-ray, so it looks like this may have gotten a um, an update. Uh, but once again, this is based on the original manga and characters from Go Nagai. Um, it is, this is considered unrated, but I do know that... Uh, this is an OVA series, uh, New Cutie Honey, um, being an OVA from the 90s, has a tendency to not skimp on the fan service. Uh, there is definitely nudity. I know that when uh, Honey transforms, as we'd already talked about, um, she does. Um, she does get naked in her transformations, and I know that is kind of full out there in this one. Um, this is pretty, pretty notorious for that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if I have any younger viewers... Um, might not be one you want to uh, dig into right now. Uh, but yeah, this one is cool. Um, I have I think I own this on DVD, and when I found out it was coming out on Blu-ray, it was an easy choice um, to, to ask for. So with this one specifically, in a futuristic world where evil comes in all shapes and sizes, she is the ultimate we weapon. She's Cutie Honey, a one-woman SWAT team whose android chassis is capable of changing at will into a dazzling array of hard-hitting, curvaceous bodies, each with its own set of special skills, weapons, and other impressive physical attributes. You can tell with the wording where they're trying to go here. Um, going to the guys, legendary android superhero is back and hitting the bad guys where it hurts most. This Blu-ray collection contains all eight OVA episodes featuring the original Japanese language with English subtitles and the English dub. So yeah, um, I think this one comes with trailers, clean openings and endings, audio drama, hmm, that's neat, and more. Not sure what the more is, but that is... The OVA, New Cutie Honey. I am slowly working up to collecting all of the Cutie Honey. I think the only Cutie Honey uh, show I don't have at this point is uh, Re-Cutie Honey, which was a show that came out in the early 2000s um, by Gynax, actually, <laughs> um, that did it. So you've got the Gynax jiggle and all the other interesting uh, things that come out of a Gynax um, show from that era um with it being cutie honey so yeah um not much else to say about that show but uh glad i actually have a copy getting down to the wire here folks so up next is a blu-ray that um well i i love lupin 
I have been collecting as much Lupin as I can, as it comes out, as I'm able to. Um, and one of the things I've really enjoyed about Lupin is that um, pretty much every year there's been either one new movie or one new OVA for Lupin or a whole new TV series that has come out for Lupin. So um, Lupin has been very prolific uh, within you know, the culture for decades. Decades upon decades. Um, I think uh, I know there's the original Lupin TV series, uh, the Green Jacket Lupin. Uh, then there was the Red Jacket Lupin TV series. Uh, and then there was the Pink Jacket Lupin TV series, um, considered series one, series two, series three, or seasons one, two, and three. Though seasons, season two, if you consider Red Jacket Lupin, um, a season is like 190 episodes. Um, that was the one that really hit it off. Um, and most of the specials and TV and, and movies and things like that follow Red Jacket Lupin. But, um, you know, you will remember that we actually have now a Blue Jacket Lupin um, <laughs> uh, TV series um, that has been coming out. And then the movies related to the Blue Jacket Lupin um, as well, which are coming out more, more recently. And... <laughs> Whenever there's a new one out there, if I can get a copy, I try. So I have a majority of them at this point. Um, I can't say I have them all, but I have a majority. And I know Discotech has been really, really good with trying to get a hold of all of them um, and releasing them and actually showing you that, um, uh, that, you know, where it is. What number is the special or movie? What year did it come out? And uh, this one here is one that, uh, for the first time, is released here in the States. Um, and it is Lupin the Third, Blood Seal of the Eternal Mermaid. So, in true discotheque fashion, their Blu-rays all have this, um, this file uh, look. Um, this one is television special number 22, came out in 2011. So it tells you in 2011, that's the 22nd uh, special. So he's been basically, Lupin has had something new every year for um, 20 years up to that point and up to now, like 30 years. So um, this one's definitely really cool. And um, I don't remember if this one I'd ever actually sat down and watched. Um, I I know I had picked up a fan sub when it came out. Um, I I do. Uh, I, I'm an old school otaku. I do fan sub. Um, I do watch fan subs, but I also support the anime um, as I'm able to. And uh, yeah, so this one here is cool. Uh, this is a discotheque release, 90 minutes long, one TV special on one disc. Uh, looks like it has the full Blu-ray um, uh, updates and all of that. Uh, includes international opening and ending, behind-the-scenes voice actor interviews and trailers. Uh, so this is includes an all-new English dub with the cast of Lupin the Third Part Four. So that's cool. Um, so the actual voice actors doing the English version are the same voice actors that are doing the English version of the Blue Jacket Lupin. So that's pretty cool. Um, so an ancient seal of blood guards an immortal secret. An aqua, aquamarine genstone, the mermaid scale, appears in a secret underground auction. The queen of the underworld, nicknamed the Bear Slayer, coerces the professional jewel lifter Lupin into stealing the rock for her. Lupin swipes the stone and quickly discovers not only that it's a forgery, but that the real mermaid scale is part of an unsolved riddle that leads to uh, transcending mortality. Soon, the Bear Slayer is found murdered in cold blood. But seemingly immortal young aide Misa is kidnapped by the arms dealer Himuro. The race is on for Lupin and his gang to locate the secret to eternal life before it's used to send the earth into the state of endless war. <laughs> so one of the cool things about a lot of these uh, TV specials and, and stuff that, uh, that Lupin uh, deals with is um, they have a tendency to get into some interesting, fantastical uh, storylines. And in a lot of ways, um, you know, Lupin da is, is a thief, uh, but he's a thief with a heart of gold. So he he steals for the fun of it. He doesn't necessarily keep what he steals. Um, usually he's commissioned to steal by somebody else. Um, and he just does it for fun and gives it up uh, to somebody. 
uh, doesn't care about the effects of whatever he's stealing, if it does have um, supernatural effects or something like that. And in some, some regards, certain storylines, um, him and his group have a tendency to steal things um, just to, um, you know, restore balance to the world in a lot of ways, too. So uh, while, yeah, it's Lupin as a character is technically a bad guy, he's not necessarily a bad guy. Uh, to poorly quote um, <laughs> that movie. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so this one's cool. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it because, like I said, I'm pretty sure while I have the, um, have the fan sub, I've never actually sat down and watched it. So this is yet another one um, that I need to sit down and watch. And, you know, now that I've talked about these, I can actually open them and, and, and deal with them. Uh, me and Ruchan have a lot of catching up to do while we're still in quarantine. So definitely cool. <laughs> Lupin the Third, Blood Seal of the Eternal Mermaid. All right. Last up here is a uh, is a show that, um, well, I was going to pick up myself so many times over the last couple of months, but didn't because I elected to do other things. And there are videos coming out um, soon talking about some of the other things they've elected to do. And I'm glad I didn't, because uh, Ruchan went once again behind my back and picked it up for me, and then sat on it for months. <laughs> uh, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about, last but not least, Lupin the Third, Fujiko's Lie. Now, Fujiko's Lie is the third movie um, in the so far trilogy of um, of movies, TV shows, or whatnot that have come out uh, with Blue Jacket Lupin. And uh, this one here deals with Fujiko. So the first one dealt with uh, uh, dealt with Jigen, uh, Jigen's gravestone. I actually made a review of that one. Um, then the second one uh, was uh, Goemon's Blood Trial. Uh, which dealt with Goemon. And then this one, the third one, deals with Fujiko. Um, I think the TV series, the Italian Job, um, or part four, or whatever it is, I think is technically the part that dealt with just Lupin. Um, well, I, I think technically it deals with more than just Lupin, but uh, yeah. Now, <clears throat> this set here doesn't have a whole lot of information, so I can't get into it. And I've not actually watched this movie yet. Um, Unlike uh, unlike Jigen's Gravestone, uh, when this came out, um, it didn't seem, or if it was on Netflix, I, well, I had already given up my Netflix uh, access by that point. So I never actually saw it when it originally came out. What of it I have seen have only been in AMVs. Um, so I'm definitely happy to own a copy of this. Uh, this is one film on one disc. It is 50 minutes long. In the back it just says, who needs the truth when you can believe in the lie? Um, and I know Fujiko is definitely known as a character for being a character to frequently lie to, um, you know, um, and sometimes that tends to get her into some pretty considerable trouble. Uh, but uh, this one's definitely interesting. I love the artwork that they went with for this. Um, I know it's the um, it's the same uh, uh, the same director that directed uh, uh, the Fujiko TV series. Um, uh, that came out, but it's using a lot of the same coloring and same artwork um, from that, but not utilizing the um, pencil line shading that they utilized in that. And I actually really like the update to the look um, that these characters have from that. Um, they very much still look like they they look more like the manga does, which is something pretty cool. So, I mean, you can kind of, uh, if I put both of these up, you've got, you know, traditional, or what we're used to seeing Lupin over here, um, right here, and then versus the more stylized Lupin, which is more like he looks like in the manga. Um, you know. So it's... Uh, it's definitely different, and I very much enjoy it. Uh, this is one that I cannot wait to crack open. I recently received this, um, so this has been 
hot on my list to actually uh, <laughs> get out there. Um, on the back here, it lists it as Lupin the Third, film number three, because this is the third film in the trilogy, Lupin the Third trilogy, uh, whereas this is television special 22. Uh, this is film three um, of the of the three set. And, um, you know, I, th I think at some point in time I'm going to review this. I believe I do have uh, Goemon's Blood Trail also um, that I had previously uh, picked up. So uh, if I really want to complete the trilogy as far as, um, well, not just watching it, but um, as far as, like, reviews, obviously I should talk about uh, Goemon's Blood Trial and then Fujiko's Lie. Uh, so I have plans. <laughs> I have plans. Uh, definitely, definitely up there. And, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to uh, crack this open. Discotech once again, pulls through uh, with Lupin. <laughs> I, I think the grand majority of everything in here is Discotech. Let's see here. That's not Discotech. That's not Discotech. So of the stuff that I've uh, picked up recently, all of this is Discotech. This is not. Two of these are the same video game. <laughs> but yeah, so that brings us to the end. Um, thanks for sticking with me up to this point. Uh, I am very, very grateful um, for every single one of you that has watched through to this point. Um, if you are new to this channel and this is your first time uh, seeing one of these videos, um, Thank you so much for sitting uh, and listening to me ramble for the length of time that I have. Um, I realize this type of video is probably fairly good to have on as potential background material, and that's perfectly fine um, as well. But uh, either way, uh, if this is your first time tuning in, um, I encourage you to go check out some of my other content. Um, the end cards that will be coming up here uh, should show you um, past videos and other things potentially that you may want to pick up. And I encourage you to consider subscribing uh, to the channel because that will put you front row and center whenever I release something new. And of course, hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified when I do release something new. Um, I'm trying to keep to a fairly uh, frequent schedule of uh, one uh, a video one every one to two weeks uh, based off of my schedule and what's going on and how much free time I ultimately have. Uh, <laughs> So I'm trying to keep things going and I appreciate every, every single one of you that has uh, watched me up to this point and continues to watch me um, now and into the future. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, anything you want to, um, you know, want to bring in, I encourage you to go into the comment section below here on YouTube and uh, leave me a comment. I read all of them. I respond as I'm able. Uh, so, you know, please do. Uh, if you have any um, any thoughts about any of these or like I said a couple of these I'm considering doing reviews of and if you would like to see them do go ahead and let me know that you would like to see that um, I appreciate any feedback or um, whatnot that you have on that you can also hit me up on Twitter on Tumblr on Facebook all of those social media li links will be in the description below as well as a link to my website uh, where you can go to also see more of this content and and whatnot there so I encourage you to go check out um, in all of those ways and interact as you're able to um, so yeah <laughs> thanks for tuning in um, this has been a lot of fun to sit down and actually talk about um, all this cool stuff and I've got more stuff to go over and a ton of stuff to watch and I can't wait to try on my new shirts and throw them into the rotation and all of that so Either way, though, guys, uh, I think that's pretty much it at this point. So once again, thanks for tuning in. I am Nate, the old school otaku, signing off. Go to the light in a world. There's this guy. He's actually a kid. He's only 12 years old, but he controls giant robo.